Hey, hi everyone. I'm Naina. Hope you're all doing good and staying safe. In today's session, we'll understand how do we generate Salesforce surveys using flows. So before I get into demo, let me do a quick recap of the previous two sessions of Salesforce survey, where we understood what is the business use case, how do we send survey to an individual or to a list view through Survey Builder, how do we send survey invitation from a contact record or from a lead record, and we have also leveraged the customer feedback survey, the out of the box functionality, which generates Salesforce survey as soon as case is closed. So in today's session, we'll focus on how do we generate Salesforce surveys using flows. In the last session, we have seen the same for process builder. So flows is a very important and very powerful declarative tool. So this is very important. How do we leverage flow survey action to generate surveys is something we're gonna check in today's session. So what I do is I log into my dev walk. So as usual from setup, from quick find, I gain flows, which you see under process automation. And then I'll click on new flow if I have to create a new flow. For the existing flows, you can just review any of the existing flow. But let's say, suppose you wanted to generate Salesforce service and we are implementing for the first time. Let me click on new flow. And over here, you can select which type of flow do you like to create. Is it a screen flow or a record trigger flow or it could be scheduled trigger flow. For anything, you can leverage the out of the box flow survey action. So if you are unfamiliar about this different different types like screen flow, scheduled trigger flow, we have already there are a couple of videos focusing on screen flow and record trigger flows. It's for beginners. So you can go and watch the flow basic session, which is done by Namrata. So record trigger flow is something we're going to choose for today's session. It's nothing but I wanted to send a trigger whenever record is modified based on some business criteria. So let me click on, as I have chosen the record trigger flow, let me click on next. And over here, you can uh, select how do you want to start building? Whether would you like to go with free form, which means you have to control the placement of all elements and connectors, or you can go with auto layout, which means Salesforce will position all elements and connectors. So for today's demo, let me go with auto layout. So this is the auto layout, and this is a flow builder page, and this is how it looks. So first I will review the configuration. I would like to trigger the flow when a record is created or updated. So it depends on the business use case. For my business use case, I have selected this. Maybe there could be a scenario when a record is deleted, you wanted to invoke the flow, you can now select as per the business use case. And I wanted to run the flow after the record is saved, not before. So that is the reason I will go with the second option, which is also the default option. And I'll click on done. Now, since I have defined when the uh, when the flow needs to be triggered, I will choose the object. So I will go with my custom object as a VC one stop. You can also choose the standard object as well. But I don't have any business use case for standard, so I'll go with custom object. And over here, let me define the criteria. First criteria would be I would like to uh, invoke the flow whenever uh, if if the user would like to receive the survey email, only then I wanted to trigger the flow. And the other criteria is if the user is subscribed, only then I would like to trigger the flow. So that is the reason I'll go with these two custom fields. These are the two uh, checkbox fields, which is that's the reason I'm going with the true values. If uh, user is interested to receive survey emails, if it is true, and if the user has subscribed, only then I would like to invoke this flow. And when to run the flow for updated records, I wanted to run the flow only when a record is updated to meet the condition requirements, not all the time. So that's the reason I'll go with second option. Whenever record is updated to meet these two criteria, only then I would like to run the flow. So I'll click on done. So that is step one. You choose the you choose the object and you choose when the flow needs to be triggered. Now the step two is I will get all the records of SFDC one stop because that is the custom object. And uh, what should be the name? Basically, I need survey invitation, right? Uh, but I'll go with get SFDC one stop subscribers. 
So this is my label. You can name it as per your uh, business use case again and choose the object. I'll go with RCTC one stop because that is the object where I'm implementing this flow. Okay, let me choose. You see, one stop subscribers. And over here, you can filter what kind of records would you like to get. So I uh, would like to get the record, uh, get the uh, records which is created today. So today's date is 19th, FN09, FN2021. So this is a criteria. And also, if the user has liked my video, only in that case, probably I would like to only get those records. So that's a epic list value. And now what I do is the sort option. This is not very important for my business use case because uh, I don't have any such business use case. So I'll go with the default option, not sorted. How many records would you like to store? I would like to store all the records and uh, how to store record data, automatically store all fields. So if you go with this option, what happens is Salesforce will create a variable. If I click on done, you will see a variable over here on the left side. So let me click on done so you understand what it is. So you see Salesforce automatically has created a collection variable for us because I have chosen all records. Even for the single record, Salesforce does create variable. So I am done with step two. I got all my records. And now let me also create a loop for my, basically I wanted to loop all the records which I got in step two. So what should I, SMTC one stop loop. So I'm just looping all the records of this particular object. So collection variable is something was created by, uh, created in the last step, in the earlier step. So I'll go with the same variable. This is something but which you see on the left side. And yes, I wanted to go with the first item to last item. This is how I would like to iterate my collection. And I click on done. So basically, if you understand, there are three steps. First step, you choose the object when you like to trigger the flow. Step two, you get all the records based on the criteria that you define. I have defined two conditions only those records will be pulled and I would like to iterate all the records from start to end from first to last that is how I have chosen the loop uh, element and now what I do is I will choose the element called as action over here I would like to go with survey action the left side is filtered by I will choose surveys and over here I'll choose which survey uh, action or which survey I have these are the different surveys that I have created so I'll go with the second one SMTC one stop underscore learning if you're doing if you're uh, reviewing this session for this first time go ahead and uh, uh, view the first video where we are uh, where we understood how do we create our first Salesforce survey using survey builder so this is the same survey so I'll go with that so I choose my survey here which survey needs to be invoked for this particular flow. And uh, I'll go with the uh, send survey. This is the action. So this is the flow survey action, which we are basically trying to invoke here. Survey subject is not optional. I will not select. What is very important for flows is, even for flows or process builder or for any, you have to choose a recipient type, whether it should be user, contact, or lead. I will go with lead. And over here, recipient uh, is very important. So what I do is I will create a new resource variable. I'll call it as contact ID. Text. And the value would be because I would like to get the contact ID, I will choose that particular contact record and let me get the ID. Where is the ID? Okay, so this is how I am defining my variable where I am trying to get the contact ID. So this would be an input for my flow. If you, I don't need as output, so I'll not select that. 
but again it depends on the business use case so basically in this step what i am doing is i am mapping the contact to the flow recipient who the recipient is in this case uh, for my custom object i have a contact record and i would like to associate that contact record to this variable i'm just defining the contact uh, id to this variable i click on done and this is how i'm mapping the contact record to this particular contact which means the survey will be sent to this particular contact and this particular survey invitation doesn't need any authentication which means user need not log in into salesforce in order to fill the survey i click on done and basically there are four steps so it again depends on the business use case you don't need to go with loop if you don't want to iterate all the records if you would like to iterate then go with loop and if you would like to add a few more decisions basically if you would like to leverage a decision as well you can go with that but i don't want that so i'll stick to this particular flow it's very simple flow and now what i do is i click on save and the name i will be pro making it as sdc and stop flow survey action description you can now make it as test flow for the action just for your own understanding why you have created this flow i click on save you can ignore this basically i have uh, this morning is something you can ignore this since i have if you remember i have selected all records that is a reason uh, it, you get this warning so that is fine i click on activate the flow is now active and let me go back to my sfdc one stop um, object let me go to the staff now what i do is i create a new record what's very important is i have to map this particular record to a contact which has the email id this contact has got the email id created date uh, is 19 because this is one of the criteria if you remember in under get records i have mentioned that it needs to be 19th of september and live should be yes this is the two criteria and if the flow criteria is the flow will be invoked when the uh, when the user has subscribed and when the user is interested to receive survey email only then survey will be invoked so this is a criteria that we have defined as step 1 and step 2 if you remember so i click on save the expectation is since it might meets all the criteria that is defined in the flow i should receive an email so my record has been created let's see if i receive an email or not so this is how you receive your flow survey email using flow survey action so what we have done is we have created a flow this basically there are only four steps what's very important is how do you define the contact id here and i have defined the contact id by creating the variable and for that variable what i have done is i have populated the contact record using the record uh, i mean i can probably show you again i just clicked on new resource and i have clicked on variable you can go with the text type and the name is something you can give as anything contact id and over here on the default value you have to choose how do you map the contact id i map the contact id by navigating to this global variables i choose the record under record i look for the contact the related record and under related record i fetch i try to get the id so this is how you need to map the contact id so this state is already used this is for again for your information stuff so this is how you have to define so this step is very important the way you define your uh, map your contact id recipient so this for today's demo we have focused on contact recipient you can also there could be business scenario where you wanted to leverage flows for leads or for a user in that case the same uh, formula all you have to do is define your uh, recipient type and under recipient you choose the uh, proper variable which gets you the lead id or the user id again depends on your business use case in today's session it was all around contact id so that is how we you have to create a very simple flow 
and if you wanted to make a very advanced flow what you can do is you can also make use of different elements that we have like for example you can make use of decision logic one such logic and there is also assignment logic instead of going with loop you can go with assignment logic as well so again it all depends on the business use case but well ultimately you you need to understand how do you define this recipient type to the recipient this is what we understood in today's session thank you so much for all your time hope uh, the, this video is uh, information and uh, thank you have a great day bye bye